Welcome back to the channel guys. So normally when we review a brand new premium device from the likes of Samsung or Apple, they are fighting it out to get your hard earned cash by providing you with a brand new killer feature like portrait or perhaps a faster processor. However, that doesn't seem to be the case this year. This year is who has the highest price tag. As most of you know, I use an iPhone as a daily driver. Apple's top of the tier iPhone 7 Plus, last year's best phone in my opinion. But could the Note 8 sway me away from the iPhone? Now right out of the bat, this is not necessarily a comparison video, but moreover, how does the Note 8 stack up to a user of an iPhone for nine years? And can the Note 8 sway me away from the Apple ecosystem? Now let's look at the phone, the phone's exterior. Now this is a premium device, both by price and by build. The days where Samsung used to use a bit too much plastic are now sure behind them. I mean, there still is some plastic, but not where it counts. With Gorilla 5.0, sturdy glass at the front and glass at the back, bonded together by an aluminium frame, the handset certainly feels sturdy and expensive on the hand and it should unlike apple they lack the courage to remove the headphone jack which is found down at the bottom alongside with a usb type c charge port and a single speaker but is it me or haven't they aligned the free key placement is pretty good with a right-handed power button the left hand side of the device however it's got a volume rocker and a designated bigsby button that cannot be assigned for anything else. Here we are, Samsung adding additional buttons, but Apple on the other hand are removing them. You are my best friend and we've got some things to do. At the top is a micro SD card and SIM. If cleverly designed by Samsung, this tri can actually accommodate two SIM cards if you buy the right model right off the bat. However, if you're going to be adding additional memory, which you can, a good 256 gig SD card would do the job great. The Samsung is packed with lots of features, but by far the standout one is a display. Samsung referred to it as the Infinity Display. Beautiful 6.3 inch display with a maximum resolution of 1440 by 2960. But it doesn't come set at that resolution. You have to go into the settings and change it for you to get the best out of this 1200 nit massively bright display at its best. This, the 18 by nine aspect ratio takes some getting used to and the wraparound screen in my opinion makes you feel like you're actually losing some screen real estate. It's not for everybody, it looks pretty. Now to drive that massive display, you always need some horsepower and there's plenty on the Note 8 with packed in with a Snapdragon 835 or the Exynos 8895, depending on what market you're in, there's plenty of power. Think laptop in your pocket power. Facebook browsing should be silky smooth. With the help of the Adreno 540, gaming is also very nice on the high resolution display. Not quite as good as an Xbox One though. And this being the top tier device, you get a whopping six gigabytes of RAM. Inbuilt storage, 64 gig, and as I've said already, a 256 gig micro SD card should do the job just fine. Okay, okay, so as an iPhone user, I want to know how does the camera perform? And all of my Android friends are going to be having a smug face right now because the Note 8 shoots great pictures. In fact, it does shoot better pictures than my current 7 Plus, but the margin isn't as big as you might think. With dual camera setup, the first time Samsung's done this, it benefits from features like live focus. This is very similar to portrait mode on the iPhone, and indeed it performs better, but similarly really, with varying results. With the wide angle being f1.7 and the telephoto being f2.4, the cameras perform really well, even on low light. And you have an array of shooting modes, with video shooting all the way up to 4K 30. 
not to be outdone by Apple, Samsung will be releasing a video mode that allows you to record to 4K 60 frames per second. The front facing camera is not as wide angle as the iPhone, however, it's 8 megapixel f1.7 autofocus camera, so it's pretty neat. Now with the Samsung S8, you've got a 3500 milliampere hour battery. You'd think that with the Note 8 being a bigger display that Samsung would up this. However, they've gone south with it. In fact, they've gone down to 3300 uh, 300 milliampere amp battery. This could be two reasons. One, Android Nougat is that much more efficient at conserving battery along with the new hardware, or Samsung may be a little bit worried about yesteryear's events. However, you do have quick charge to get you out of trouble. The pen. Remember this? How are we gonna communicate this? We don't wanna carry around a mouse, right? So what are we gonna do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're gonna use a stylus. No. <laughs> no. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away and you lose them, yuck. Nobody wants a stylus, so let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. Right, I'm going to come out and say it. Although the pen is very precise and the note date remains what approved with it inserted or not, handwriting is by far the slowest input method. And in my case, as I demonstrate while I write on this always on display, that you can use even with the phone locked is almost unreadable so honestly i'm unlikely to ever use it and unfortunately this seems to be echoed by other note users who are not artists and want to sketch stuff and look completely awkward by having a stylus as an iphone user i have become accustomed to snappy performance and silky smooth and android nougat 7.1.1 and samsung's near stock uh, skin almost deliver on this. Now it is possible for Android to give you that same iOS experience. Check out my Google Pixel video. I loved it. But even with all this power, the Samsung somehow still manages to occasionally hesitate when you're going from one application to the other. The multitasking occasionally feels hesitant. But by far the most important thing that I've found that I cannot understand what's causing it is perhaps when you're scrolling. It feels like the screen still continues scrolling a brief moment as you press on the screen to stop. It makes you feel detached from the actual experience. This is really disconcerting. But apart from that, it's really good. With security being utmost important nowadays with everybody's devices, Samsung haven't shortchanged you or swapped existing technology like some other companies are doing so. For the record, you have the, the traditional pin input, you got um, biometrics, fingerprint scanner right at the back, and yes, lots of people have mentioned how awkwardly placed this is. And yes, if you're left-handed, it doesn't really work very well. And you also have iris scanner and face recognition. Face recognition is probably not as good as it should be, but in good lighting conditions, it does the job. For a thousand pounds, the best part of a thousand pounds, because once you've added an SD card, that's how much it's gonna roughly cost you, would I change from the iPhone? And it's a simple no. Not because of the build quality, because the Samsung's got great build quality. Not because of the screen, because the Samsung's got a better screen than the iPhone. But mainly because of the user experience. That is the one thing that makes a difference. The Note has lots of things to offer. The pen, the split screen usability, customization, lots of things like that. But it also lacks a lot on other things. Like the, the tactic feedback you get, it's old fashioned. I mean, it vibrates the whole table when it goes off. Unlike the iPhone, it's a very gentle you know, connection you get from it. Throughout the whole interface, you've got loads of things like that. And it sounds silly and trivial. However, the user experience is what makes a big difference for me. And I think that 
Yes, this will be a beast if you're using it for multitasking, uh, for emails and all that stuff. And if you're not emotionally attached to an Apple device, which most Apple fans are. <laughs>